Okay, welcome everyone. Thanks for, for taking the time to um, have a look at this, this webinar. So this, this webinar is for uh, Autodesk Revit MEP 2015, um, new features. Um, so my name is Brendan Upton. I'm one of the, the technical, technical consultants uh, for specifically for the Revit MEP um, area at, at A2K Technologies. Um, here. And I'm sure I probably know a few of you on, on, on the list here today, or I've, I've met you already. If not, I'm probably sure to meet you very soon. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do, let me just get this panel out of my way, and let's get going. All right. So what I'll do is I'm going to I'm going to cover the um, the MEP specific features first, um, the, the new features specific to sort of the MEP tool sets. I'll cover those first and we'll, I'll, I'll demo a few of the um, ones that you can see there on the screen. And then I'm going to come in because there's quite a few just the Revit platform enhancements and, and new features that is common to, to all disciplines. A lot of these new new features here are really quite, um, quite handy and they're really going to help even all you MEP engineers and, and modelers and, and and designers as, as well. Um, okay, so let's let's get into it. Let's get going um, with the new features specific to the MEP. All righty. Okay, so the first um, the first major. Uh, feature is with regards to the calculations for the pressure drops. Um, so they've added in some some new equations, some additional equations as to what was already there um, in terms of uh, calculating the the duct and and pipe uh, pressure drops. Um, so you can now calculate the pressure drop for duct and pipe using either the Harland or Colebrook equations. Um, so in, in past versions of the software, the API was open to a degree in this area and you could, um, some companies were able to program if, if they had that um, ability or if they had assistance by, by companies like, like ourselves at ATK here to, to actually um, put in some, some of their own uh, equations to some degree. But now they've, uh, they've incorporated it in, into, the, into the software that the the Harlan and the Colebrook um, equations are, are, are available there. Um, so you can access these um, these equations from the mechanical settings dialog box um, under the uh, the calculation for both ducts and for pipes. Uh, so we'll have a bit of a look at that um, as as we go through. Okay, so the next, the next, uh, the feature for MEP is the tap duct and pipe tags. Um, you can now tag a numerical value along a tap duct or pipe that varies along its length. Um, so prior to this enhancement, Revit could not tag a numerical value along a tap duct or pipe that varied. Um, so with this enhancement, the text multiple values is reported in the tag and. Revit displays the actual value based on the location of the tag um, or, or its leader. Uh, so I guess the, the bottom line here is, uh, excuse me if this uh, message is popping up, let me just take care of this. Uh, okay, so hopefully they won't pop up again. Um, so the bottom line for this for this one pretty much is that the, the tag in the duct and pipe is, is more accurate now um, along the length of, of the duct. Um, so in, in past versions, um, even though the, the flow obviously is, is, is altering it as the duct run goes and, and branches out to, to different end terminals. Um, when, it's, when it was the case where taps were being used, that the duct was being tapped, um, past the, anywhere past the tap was just show the previous value. It wasn't, it wasn't recalculating or re-displaying re in those tags the, the, the accurate value. Okay. So there's also some enhancements in the on the electrical side. Um, so the electrical API um, has now been um, begun to be be opened up now, uh, in line with 
how they have already opened it up to, to those certain degrees for, for the ducts and, and the pipes settings um, in, in past versions. Okay, so the electrical a, a portions of the electrical API is now starting to um, be, be opened up as well. So this um, this feature is specifically around being able users being able to create their own unique wire shapes um, and add and modify wire properties. Um, so this is a this is something that we don't really have time to, to demo today because this is a, you know editing the API is, is a is a topic of it on its own. <laughs> um, so but just be aware that. The, this a, the API um, of the electrical of the interface for, for the electrical side has now been opened up, so that uh, users can actually um, modify and edit that. So that that would involve um, the, someone in the company having knowledge of of API um, uh, up, up updating the API and, and amending the the, the API for, for Revit, so that you know. The, they would have the, the program knowledge. Someone in, in the company might might be doing that, developing that. Um, alternatively, um, like I mentioned before, you may get assistance from from support companies like ourselves here at ATK um, to to help to 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 add those sort of third party tools you can add you now into Revit with, with all of these areas of the API being opened up. Okay, so I guess this is just the next progression in in on the on the MEP side of, of them opening up and, and allowing you know third party tools and and outside uh, applications to be able to come in and, and, and edit things and customise to, to companies' um, needs and requirements. All right, so I've left this slide in here. Some of you may have already seen this in, if you've looked at new features already. Um, so this this additional country-specific content is obviously it's it's not uh, really. Uh, Relevant, I guess, to where we are right now in, in Australia. <laughs> um, so it is a new feature here, though. So I, I thought I'd leave it in. O only reason being is that um, uh, two, two reasons really. I guess th this is going to help. I guess probably the larger companies out there that might be working on international projects, um, or any company really. I guess it doesn't have to be a large one, but it, if you're working on international. Um, Projects uh, in in different regions, you you, you can uh, you can see that they're they're creating these the different country specific content um, packs all the time um, to to assist with those projects. And I guess second the second point I just wanted to make on that was that although the, this is not Australian um, or, or you know this this sort of region, I, I guess in in a way, um, I guess it's encouraging to see that they are continually that that Autodesk is is continually um, creating these these. Content, these country-specific content packs. I guess you, what we can take away from it is that you know potentially we'll see more and more in the future and closer to home, you know, in, in closer to this region. Um, all right. At this point, I might just uh, just swap, jump over into Revit and demo a few of those specific MEP um, uh, features there before we jump into the more of the general common platform um, enhancements there. All right, so I'll jump over into I'll jump over into Revit here, and trusting that you can all still see my screen, okay. Okay. All right, so I'm in uh, I'm in Revit 2015 here. I've also got 2014 open here because I just want to show you just with a couple of these features. I just want to show you how it was behaving pr prior to 2015, and then so you can sort of get a better idea of what what that what's actually changed. I guess. Um, all right, so the first um, that that first feature that we looked at with regards to the pressure drop. Um, so those pressure drop, those additional pressure drop like um, equations are now available um, from the manage tab. If you go up to your manage tab and into the MEP settings, you go to your mechanical settings. So in this dialog box, this is where the calculations um, equations can be found. So for both duct and for pipe settings, you've got the calculation um, tab there. When you click on this. And you can see here now on this pull down menu for the calculation method, we now have access to the Colebrook and the Harlan equations. Um, okay, so if you click on these, well, just while we're in here, um, if you scroll down underneath here, it actually gives 
a, a bit of a description about the equation, what it's doing. It also, if you scroll down further, it sort of explains a bit about what the different um, parts of the equation mean and how it applies to what, what it's doing, I guess, to, to, to the type of well, look. I'm sure most of you out there know even better than I do what, what is all going on here, but yeah, just to be aware that um, you've got those little, um, that, that you've got those, those options there now um, to, to, um, uh, to change the way that it's calculating that pressure drop. And I guess if I can just sort of uh, demonstrate that quickly, if I was to select a section of duct here and I can interrogate in the properties over here on the left hand side, um, okay, so I've got a pressure drop, um, uh, some parameters here for the, for the, regarding the pressure drop and hopefully if I can demonstrate this well for you guys, if we come back into the mechanical settings here and come to the calculation and change that to Colebrook as, as an example. See, it's thinking. It's it's setting up the, those new settings in the background, um, and you can see that it hasn't changed by much. But you can see that it's 1.68 now instead of 1.67. So the the pressure drop calculations are actively changing, in, um, uh, depending on on which equation is checked there. And if I I guess go one more time back in there, and let's just have a look at what happens when we change it to the Harland equation. Click OK. So we can see here now, the same section of duct, the pressure drop is 1.62 now. So subtle differences um, with the way that it's uh, um, calculating that. All right. So the next feature that we discussed um, still on the, uh, or predominantly on the mechanical side here is with regards to the tag tagging that accurate um, flows in, in, in duct work or, or runs of duct where taps are involved, okay? Um, so prior, prior to this version, let me just, this is where I'll just flick over quickly into Revit 2014 here just to show you what was happening prior to, to 2015, okay? So just a really sort of a, a basic demo here, I've got the, the out of the box um, demo model open, um, which I'm sure most of you may, may, maybe uh, have recognised already. Um, okay, so, but just a, a basic demo here, I've just modified a few of these uh, um, branches here just so that it's using taps, okay. Um, so you can see, if I, and I've created a tag here to tag the flow um, in that section of, of, of duct, okay. So in 2014 here, what was happening, or the, and, you know, 2014 and, and, and um, earlier, what was happening here is that the the duct, the, the flow, um, as for an, for example, so the leads per second being displayed at that from that section of duct, is obviously um, being calculated for those two ter those two uh, diffusers or those two air grills there. Um, if you come up past this tap now, we, we realistically we should see a drop in in the pressure there. Um, but the tag is still showing at 220. Now, if I here we, we were able to use the system inspector tool in, in, um, in 2014. Okay, some of you might have played around with this already. So if I use that system inspector tool, you can see that the system inspector tool will actually show the correct. So it's it's uh, it's 220 there, and then if I move the tag, um, if I move my cursor up to that section past this um, branch, past that tap. You can see that it's now 110. So the the system inspector was showing it accurately, but it still wouldn't tag accurately. That was that was the issue that you couldn't tag these. Um, okay, so this has now been fixed. Okay, so we'll cancel that and come back over into uh, Revit uh, 20 Revit MEP 2015. I've got the same same um, part of that building um, uh, modified to some degree. Okay, and it's just to sort of uh, de demonstrate these. For, for taps here coming out of the duct, and if I grab my my tag, I can tag along this duct now, and I can say, okay, so that's 440, 330, and you can see as I work my way up, 220, and that was now tagging as 110 litres per second. Okay, so you can see that you, you're able to more accurately um, uh, tag these these flows through through the um, through the length of the duct. So it's it's just going to help your documentation that bit further, that much further. Okay. 
All right. So let's jump back into the uh, PowerPoint and let's um, let's keep moving. All right. So let's have a look at some of these platform enhancements now that are going to be common to to all. Um, all disciplines, but a lot of them very handy um, for, for for MEP just as much as, as the others. Okay, so and I'll, the ones that are the, the ones that um, out of this list, I'll go through them in, in the slides here. But the ones that I believe are going to be um, the most helpful for MEP specific um, modelling and 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 and, product and, and um, production, um, I'll, I'll demo them quickly back in the software. Okay, so let's work our way through uh, some of these. So there's some documentation, um, general documentation tool enhancements in 2015 now, enhanced schedules and material takeoffs. Um, we've got uh, views on sheets. Um, you can, what that one is referring to is that if you, uh, if you activate a view on a sheet and work in that view, um, you can just double click outside of the view um, to, to deactivate that, that view and go back to the sheet. Um, okay. Another another one here to duplicate views is another handy one. In past versions, when you duplicated a view, it would give you a copy of that view in your project browser. But some of you probably got quite frustrated how it used to um, uh, it used to uh, prefix the name of that duplicated view with, with copy of or or, um, or copy one um, as a prefix. So that means it would you know, depending on how big you how many views you've already got in your project browser, this, it would sort itself you know miles away from the view that you originally duplicated it from and it just becomes a bit frustrating and messy. So what they've done now is with the duplicate view tool, it actually will rename, it'll duplicate the view and in the project browser that name of that duplicated view will be um, a suffix so that it'll, it'll have the, the original name of the view with a suffix of copy one or copy two, copy three. Um, okay, so it just means that when you duplicate those views, they'll sort of stay together. It's easier for renaming, okay. So a, little, a minor one, but something that's been on a wish list for, for a while. Um, some other documentation tools, um, assembly code settings. Um, you, can, you can now basically specify the assembly code file to use um, for, for assigning uniform code to the assembly code type property of model elements. Um, so the file can be stored on a local server or a remote server, and um, and a uniform at 2010 classification text file is is also now installed. Um, there's some IFC um, enhancements and with regards to, to linking, but there's a slide a, a bit later. We'll, we'll come back to that um, to that one um, in, in a sec. But yeah, there's some good good new features of IFC and being able to link rather than than import. Um, and there's a few other enhancements, just with the way that um, if you are importing um, in uh, the IFC file, if you're still going to import it, just the way that um, it will uh, react with the geometry, and this is just a, a, a few more flexible things that you can do. So just a few enhancements there with, with the import tools. Okay. The other one there, um, shared parameters in view titles. Prior to this, that was um, not not possible, and that was um, a bit of a, another another um, uh, issue for, for for many users. Um, so that that is now available. You can have shared shared parameters in, in view titles. Okay, um, so let's, let's let's move on. The next one, enhanced hidden lines. Okay, so there's a new parameter to control the visibility of, of hidden lines, um, which um, displays all the hidden lines automatically. Okay, so this one maybe maybe this is not something that MEP area would use a, a, a great deal. Well, I'm sure some of you have probably even at least just played around with it. So it just it just works a bit better. If any of you are aware of it or have played around with it, you you you'll um, you know that there were some some bugs or some issues with that with the way it was displaying those hidden um, those hidden lines depending on what discipline was selected for for the views. Um, so they've just uh, they've updated that a bit and you've now got a bit more functionality. There's actually a parameter in there now um, specific to the to the view. So show hidden lines and you've got some options there as to what you actually show. Okay. Um, so this is a this is a good one as well. So um, they've made some they've finally made some changes to the revision improvements. 
Um, no, but this this is this is a this is a good one. This is one a lot of people have been waiting for for a while. Okay, so you've got a um, few things here. Uh, so you've now got the um, the the option of being able to delete revisions where we we didn't in the past. So in your revision um, sheet issues and revisions dialog box, you now have this um, delete button. Okay, so you can actually physically remove a revision out of the project. Once you delete it, it's gone. There's no way of getting it back, pretty much. But um, that's been a yeah, that's been a wish list one for for a while. Um, uh, most definitely. So you know, in in, in the past, you've we've only had access to um, the uh, these merge buttons, being able to sort of merge you know multiple revisions into into each other. That was kind of like the only way you could really get rid of revisions. But it was a bit clunky and just didn't didn't work that well. So they've yeah they've added this functionality to be able to delete those revisions now, so you can clean out your your revisions. Um, I guess it's Again, this is something you, you use wisely. Again, this is, a, this is a management tool with your documentation. You don't want people just going in there, obviously, deleting revisions, you know, that hop. But um, but it's definitely an option that's been 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 cried out for. So yeah, that, that option is is now there. And and the further to to that, just on revisions here, you thought there's now new um, tools for the sketching of the revision clouds themselves, the shapes of the clouds. Okay, so you've got access to um, the, what you would expect in a in a sketch mode, you know, in other sketch modes in in, in the Revit um, software, you know, you get your your line tools and your um, you can change in your arc lengths and whatnot. So you can start using some of those tools to sort of uh, uh, customize the way that your, your clouds look. You've also got in in the sheet issues and revisions dialog box back down here on the right hand side. Um, you've got an arc length uh, option there now, so you can actually um, set the uh, Minimum arc length for the revision clouds as well, so you've got a bit more control there. Okay, so that's that's a that's a fairly good one that that um, that update. So I'm sure a lot of you will be happy to see that one come through. Um, okay, this is another good one. This next one. Okay, so some of you might have seen this this one or heard about this, but you can now put images. Um, you can now attach images pretty much to, to, to elements in the model, and then you can schedule those those images. Okay, so um, this is one that I'll demo. Um, in, in a little while as well, once we've um, worked our way through these um, slides, but you can see here in the in the picture here on the slide that you've pretty much it, it'll schedule, schedule once you put the the, the schedule on the sheet. Um, the, if you include the image parameter, it'll actually show the, the and, and attach an image. It'll show that image in in the schedule, so that's quite handy. Um, I think I think that one will be quite handy for a lot of MEP guys. I, I think. Um, uh, to be able to show different light fittings or air grills or anything really, the different equipment. So that's something that a feature that I think um, will be used quite widely. So there's there's an option of uh, of an instance property and a type property for that image to be able to attach those images. Okay, but we'll have a look at that. Okay. Um, there's been some enhancements with the uh, energy analysis. Uh, so there's been an improved um, algorithm with the way that it communicates to um, the the online green building studio suite. So, just um, is at the end of the day, it's going to be um, even more um, accurate. So, greater greater analytical surface precision there. So, better handling of those um, of those Revit elements. Um, so, it's still though the energy analysis tools. Um, if you're not already aware, uh, you do need your subscription. You do you do need a login um, to your to to the subscription or, or, you, or your Autodesk uh, 360 um, account, if, if you um, you need that um, and you need to log into that into Revit to use those energy analysis tools to run the simulations, it's something that runs up on the on the cloud through the um, and and access to the Green Building Studio suite of, of tools. But just be be aware that they they've they've improved, made some improvements to the way that that's um, uh, being all, all calculated and what the reports that it's generating. Okay. Okay, so this is just coming back to the IFC um, uh, update now. Um, so there's a new um, there's a new link tool now, a, a link option for for IFC. So prior to 2015, you could only ever import IFC files into into Revit, and it was if any of you have dealt with it, it was you know a, a fairly painful and long-winded process a lot of the time. 
could often take half half the day or you know, waste the day just in, just importing an RC model in, um, only to see at the end of it that it doesn't hasn't actually come in the way that you wanted. So they've actually put this option in now here so that you can actually link an RC the same way that um, you would you would um, see uh, just a normal river link or even a CAD file. So that, those um, that that will is accessible from the manage links dialog box as well. So there'll be an IFC tab there now in your manage links dialog box alongside the the Revit tab and the CAD tab or the um, import tab and and so on. Okay, so there'll be an IFC tab in there um, that you can control those IFC links. Okay, um, so that's that's a, a fairly big step. Um, it's going to help a lot of those uh, projects out there that you might be working on that. Uh, um, a mixture of of Revit and and other other platforms, um, and then you're having to use the, the IFC format to to get your your um, your projects across the line. All right. So the manage links dialog box. Um, you can add from the Manage Links dialog box now, okay, so what that means is if you can see here where it's highlighted in the, in the dialog, in your Manage Links dialog box, um, you've got, an, you, we, we now have the option of an Add button here, so in the past you, you know, you could go into your Manage Links but you couldn't actually, and you could remove, you know, links and unload and, and whatnot, but you couldn't actually add from here, you had to go back to your Insert tab and Link, link Revit. Um, which was sometimes a bit of a pain. So look, a little, another little minor one, but just something that's going to make a few people smile. I think just uh, just, just helps helps all, all all these sort of little tweaks help. Okay, so um, so you just be aware that you've got an add button in there now um, in the in the manage dialog box. This is another. Some might say a. a a small change, but a, a, has been a bit of a major headache or a, a gripe, you might say, with with users out there. Um, in the past, um, pinned elements you could pin an element, but it didn't stop anyone being able to just um, select the element and delete it. Uh, you, you, you'd get a message saying uh, that the pinned element, a, a pinned element, has been deleted, and it would just delete it. Okay, so that was a bit of a um, issue for, for a lot of users, and I'm sure you, you've probably experienced it yourself as to um, just a bit of a funny way that the, that the tool worked. Why would why would it, why would you pin an element and then it be able to be deleted? So they've changed the way that this functions now. Um, you you cannot delete a, a pin element anymore. In 2015, if you try and delete a, a, an element that is pinned, you'll get this message um, um, come up to, that says pinned objects were not deleted. To delete them, unpin them before using delete. So you have to actually the user has to uh, physically unpin the element then then delete it. Okay, so. It's a small change, I guess, but a, but a major feature, I think, in terms of um, uh, wish list. Uh, oh, sorry, just jumped ahead there for a second. Yeah, so so deleting, um, being unable to delete uh, pinned elements. Um, so that's another good one. All right, so let's keep moving forward. Okay, um, okay, this is another another handy one as well. Okay, so family parameter order adjustment. Some of you might have experienced in the past when you're creating content, when you're creating your families and you're populating all of your and creating all of your parameters for those families. Okay, so you're building your parameters up in your family types dialog box, but there was, in many cases, no rhyme or reason as to the order of of um, of uh, the the parameters. Sometimes it was random. Sometimes it would it would go um, descending order, but it just would. And, and there was no way of kind of reordering it or changing it. Okay, so they've now added an option that you can actually reorder the um, the, uh, the these parameters in this in the family editing environment. So, okay, so in this family types dialog box. So in the you've got a, a move up and move down button here, which we'll have a quick look at um, in in a sec. Um, you've also got some sorting uh, orders there as well. Um, and new parameters added to um, the end of, of the group. Okay. And again, just just uh, just further to family uh, parameters um, or uh, being able to put tooltips for family parameters. Okay, so they've added a functionality in here now when you're 
creating your, your parameters or editing your parameters, you've now got uh, access to this um, a little tooltip. So you can put in a little tooltip um, for your parameters so that when, when users in, the, in a project hover over those parameters or properties in, in the properties dialog box, they'll get a little, the little pop-up will come up and it'll show the description as to what's been put here in the edit tools um, tips. But again, I'll show you this one as well. Um, just quickly when we jump back into to Revit in a sec. Um, and you've got 250 characters to play with, so you've got quite a lot of room there. You could write an essay if you, if you wish, but I guess like anything here, I think the name of the game in this scenario is to keep it short and sweet, but enough to be able to be descriptive, I guess. Okay, so that's tool tips for, for family parameters. Okay, um, tag improvements. Okay, this is another another handy one. All right. Um, okay, so the tag improvements feature is now um, with regards to the, uh, the 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 main part of this feature is with the, with regards to the leader lines. Okay, so the leader lines of tags they've adjusted the way that they function so they're sort of more in line with the way that you might have been used to how the text leader lines um, worked. Um, I'm going to show you this one quickly as well because I think this is a again it's a, it seems like a small change but it's a it's a bit of a major feature in terms of you know reducing frustration and time having to muck around with documenting things and moving tags around okay so the the leader line just behaves a little bit better now with these um, with these with these tags okay there was a little bit random in the past if you, I'm sure you've experienced it when you move your place a tag and then move it around it would um, yeah it wouldn't really play ball. Um, and then that last that last uh, point there about the new parameter elevation at top, maybe not so much of a feature that MEP users would be interested in. Probably more an architectural feature. But was this with regards to the um, uh, just with regards to um, the uh, the property the elevation at top it has been added to isolated foundations okay so wall foundations and foundation slabs so the elevation at top specifies the elevation of the highest point or plane of the foundation uh, so you can use this information tags when you're documenting a project so it just means you can get to the top surface basically again look something more maybe that that architects or even structural might use but I guess it's um it's a it's part of the tag functionality so. Maybe something you can have a have a look at. Okay, so let's um, let's jump back into the software, and I'll just show you just to, I'll just highlight. I got, we don't have the time to go through each and every single one of these, um, but I just want to just really quickly show you some of the ones that I think are going to help you guys out, and just show you a little bit more about how you actually um, access them. Okay. All right. So the first one, let's just have a, a quick look at the um, the the tag the tag feature there with the leader lines, okay, so um, if I've got a tag here um, as an example for my air terminal here, if I turn on the leader for that tag, okay, just like before, you know, we can move these these tags around and I can put a little leader um, takeoff line or like a little dog leg on that leader line, okay, um, okay, and so the issue one of the major issues with these leader lines in the past has been the, the way that they behave when you start moving things around. So yes, these tags are attached to the element they're tagging and they'll move around. So if I grab my, um, or if I select my air terminal there and I just nudge it with my cursor keys, um, if I move it around, we can see the, the tag is moving around with it and it, it's all staying all nice and good. Um, I'll just close my email there so we don't get interrupted. Apologies about that. Okay, so the tag moves around um, nicely with, with when you move the elements around, okay, and it all stays good. Okay, even if you select the tag itself and drag it, hover your cursor over and drag it from this point, all looks good. The issue was where if you grabbed the or selected the, the tag and, and selected the little grip itself on the tag and moved um, moved that around. Um, it would it would move around. So if I just quickly jump into 2014 and show you that, okay. So I've got that tag here in 2014. If I grab that, you can see how the little um, level little dog leg line or little takeoff line of the leader um, is is not really adjusting. So then you got it's a matter of moving your tag around and then having to come back and you readjust your your link. So it was a bit just a bit of a frustration. Okay. So um, that just means that this this now will actually um, 
behavior be better these leaders okay so more more the behavior i guess is as, as, I, as I mentioned is more in line with what you would have come to expect with like the text leader lines the general note um, text leader lines um, okay so that's the one thing all right so the next one let's have a look at the um, okay let's have a look at the parameter tool tip okay let's come across here to my level one lighting plan okay if I grab one of these light fixtures I'm just going to edit that family just making sure I'm definitely in uh, 2015 here because otherwise this is obviously not going to work <laughs> Okay, so yep, definitely in 2015. All right, so if I come over, make sure I'm in my level one lighting plan. I've just set up a few things with this light fixture family. If I edit that family really quickly, I can jump in here. If I come into my uh, family types dialog box, okay. If I um, come down here to the drop from ceiling, okay. So in in your family types dialog dialog box, okay, you can um, when you add at, at the time of adding the parameter, or if you click a, a parameter that you've already got there and you modify it, okay, in your in your parameter properties dialog box here, you'll see you've got this extra extra button here now, edit tooltip, okay. This is where you can add these little tooltips for your for the parameters, okay. This it's the whole idea of this, I guess, and why this was a, um, a requested feature and they've put it in is because. As I'm sure you guys are aware, especially in MEP, families can become quite um, complicated, and the parameters in there can become, um, uh, you know, you, you get quite a long list of parameters in there and formulas going on after a while. So this is just a way that you can actually add um, little tooltips in here to explain maybe to, to end users in your in your company. Maybe they're not so across how the families are working, and that they want to know, get a better idea of what the parameters actually mean. Okay, so you can just put a little description in these parameters. So what it means is I can edit that tooltip. I can put a little description. I can type here whatever I want up to 250 characters. Okay, so I've just put one in there for the for the drop from the ceiling. I click OK. I make sure that's loaded into my um, back into my project. Okay, so then within the project in um, environment, okay, I can select that fixture, and if I have a look at its properties. If I hover my cursor over um, over the uh, that parameter drop from ceiling, you can see my little um, tooltip there. How far the light fixture extends below the ceiling. A bit of a description of what that parameter is um, is displayed in that little tooltip. Okay, so that's that's that tool there. So that's quite handy. You can start doing um, that. Some people like um, a bit more organisation with their with their families. Um, are able to start labelling and descripting some of these things. Okay, um, and further to that, the other Quick one to show you there on the on the family parameters is the um, if we edit that same family again, okay, and come back into the family types, okay. So the family parameter order um, feature here now. So you've got these move up and move down buttons, okay. So I can, I, in in the family editing environment here, okay. It's, it, this is where we are again, okay, so you've got to be in the family editing environment, you're editing your family parameters, you can actually select your your, um, your parameters here and move them up so you can change the order basically. So you've got the option to put whatever order you want pretty much. Um, you've also got sort um, ascending and descending as well, okay, so I can move that one up, um, even maybe move that one up as well, okay, so this will then be saved in once it goes back into the project, okay. So I change those two there. I'll click OK and I'll load that back into my project. Okay, update the parameters, and we should now see when we go into that lot and edit its and interrogate its properties. We can see that the the it's maintained the order that I changed um, that I just changed in the in the family itself. Okay, so it's now changed the order of those two parameters. Okay, and it's maintained that that list. So. Another good one that, that was quite an issue in the past. Very, very frustrating how you couldn't reorder um, and organise your parameters the way you wanted. All right. All right. And the last, the last one here. I'll just finish on um, in terms of the demo. Just this is another good one. I think is going to be handy for um, for MEP users. I'm sure. Um, if I come back to my level two HVAC HVAC plan here. 
Okay, so the image is in in um, in schedules. All right. So when you select a, an element um, in the project, you'll notice that you now have under the identity data category or group, um, you've now got this image uh, parameter. Okay, so this is a, a in instance parameter. Um, if I edit the type, I've got the uh, type image parameter there as well. Okay, so these families come from the, these parameters, I should say, come from the families themselves. So they go back um, and start at the family. So you can, you can add, attach these images in the family, but you can also do it in the project here. Let's just keep it nice and simple. Um, if I edit this and I now get a little button here to actually attach an image, okay? You can see I've already attached a little JPEG here, um, just a little picture of a, of a grill, of an air grill, just, a, just an example of what you can do. Okay, so this is coming, this, this is a link as well, okay, so this is an image that's coming out from outside of, um, of Revit, okay, it's, it's, it's a link, so it's saved in a, in a folder, okay. Um, okay, so that, that image is now attached to this, uh, to this air terminal. If I now create a air terminal schedule, you can see that I now have, um, I'm, I'm now able to add these image um, parameters into the schedule. So if I was using the pipe image uh, parameter, I would be able to um, add that one as well. But in this example, we're just, gonna, we're just looking at the instance, instance parameter. But you can see I can now schedule that image parameter. Okay, so you don't actually, um, you won't actually see it in the actual schedule view off the project browser, which we're in at the moment, um, like with a lot of all the formatting and, and things that you change to the schedule, you don't actually see those changes here. You actually won't see the image here. Um, like a lot of that formatting stuff, you, it's not until you um, it, like it's only in, uh, it's only when you put the view uh, put the schedule onto a sheet that you actually see um, some of that formatting. And so similar with the images. Okay, so you can see there now that the images now um, come across in, into our um, onto our sheet and, and is showing in, in the schedule. So I think it's something that I think a lot of you guys might find useful and be able to use. Okay, you can um, just like dragging the other um, columns in a in a schedule, you know, you can adjust these and it will um, it should adjust the size of your image. You've also got options from the ribbon when you have that schedule selected in the sheet, you've also got options up here on the ribbon to be able to resize um, basically that button there is saying specifies the height of all rows containing images, okay, so you might uh, change that to um, 200 and if you drag that out, it'll, it'll depending on the size of the image obviously, but it'll actually squash, okay. You can also restore the size back to where it was and if I then drag um, my across, uh, column across, um, it'll, it'll resize the image, okay, so a bit of, extra bit of functionality there, so I think that's something that's, that's quite handy. All right, um, I think we might open it up to some questions now, if any of you have got any questions, feel free to type them if you haven't already, um, in the question part of your panel. And I'll see if I can answer a few here before we wrap things up. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to uh, type some questions if you if you wish. So um, one one comment there, I guess we're, we're going back to the tagging the duct. Isn't that over tagging the duct? Um, though? Yeah. Well, look, I guess it, it, it could be, um, depending on the way your company documents. I guess it's just adding that functionality. I guess to be able to tag um, a bit more accurately, if if you do need to tag the flow across across the length of the duct. All right. I'll just give you just a few more, just another couple of minutes or so in case you do want to type some questions in. Um, all right.
is there any features, there's a question here, is there any features to graphically, to graphically see view depths? Um, if I'm understanding that question correctly, I'm assuming you're referring to um, if, if elements are underneath, um, if elements are within the view depth of a, of a view, um, within the, the view depth range of a view, um, and if that's the case, the answer to that, that question is that yes, there is in your manage um, tab for your line styles. You actually have a line style in Revit called the beyond line style, and that can change the way that um, elements that live within that view depth range that are not in the primary range of the view, if they're under, under the level or on, you know, in ground services or things like that, you can actually change the line type and the colour, and that beyond line style is, is um, uh, specifically dedicated to to those elements that live in that um, view depth. Okay, then it's just a matter of obviously, uh, you know, changing your view depth to see, uh, changing your view range so that your view depth sees um, below the the level that you're currently on. So I guess if I was to draw some duct that is at minus five hundred. That duct is below the level line. If I was to come back to my view range and change my view depth back to zero, I won't see that duct. So let's undo so that it comes back. Um, and then if I change my uh, line styles to a hidden You can see that any, everything under there is, is a is a hidden case. Okay, so that's I'm, I'm guessing that's the answer to that question. Maybe perhaps you're asking if there's any further functionality with that um, in the new features. Um, if that's the case, um, maybe uh, if you want further information on that, you can always contact us at, at ATK um, and, and through the support channels or um, emails or phone number if you want a bit more information on that. But I'll ask if there's any any further questions on. Um, uh, specifically to the around the new features. Um, says it. Okay, so there's a question here around um, uh, fabrication. Okay, so um, which I'm sure maybe a few of you are, are, are um, interested in. There's been some look. There's a it's a it's a topic within itself in terms of the fabrication and how what's happening. There's been some talk that there are some new features in terms of fabrication. Um, it's not. It, it's not quite clear exactly um, what content is working with um, and, and how that might have what, what might be happening in that area. Um, I, I, I guess all I can say on that side, on that front, is just stay tuned um, for, for the fabrication uh, side of things. It might be something in the future that we might be able to do a few more webinars on, um, with, with exactly around um, what's happening with the, with, the, with the fabrication side of things. All right. Um, well, at that point, I can't see any more questions there, so I might take the opportunity here now to um, thank you guys for um, for coming along and um, and taking your time to have a look at the new features there. Um, so I'll say thank you and just um, let you know again there on the screen is the contact details there for ATK. So I'm sure you're aware of them, but just just to. Um, Reiterate that if you need need the help at any time, you've always got um, the support at, at um, ATK. Uh, you can email or, or phone through um, if you're having any issues. Uh, specifically with the new features, if you're installing the, you, you're starting to install the new um, the new software and you want some help um, around that and some of these new features, just give us a call. All right, thanks very much, guys, for attending. Um, I'll see you later.